Hello and welcome. After the last few videos, we've received a number of requests asking us to do some more videos which give fundamental understanding of Python. So consider this to be one of the first videos that you should probably go through if you're new to Python. Once again, we're going to access Python using an online version which is accessible through Google Collab. So you just need to type Google Collab in your search engine and it takes you to a page like this where you need to click on new notebook. We'll be doing everything from scratch. If you already have a background, you might find these things too basic. Let's say this is a clean slate. Now we have an online notebook with us. And all of this that we're doing here will be later on shared with you. You can find a link in the description and access it yourself. When we start working with any kind of data, the first thing that comes to question is, what is the data type? Let's say we have a variable by the name x, which stores a value 5. Now, if you want to check, what is the type of x? We can simply write type x and it says it is an integer. Let's say there's another variable y which stores a value 3.4. And if we want to check what is the type of y, we will simply type y and it says it is a float. So these are two basic data types for numbers. The difference is that ints are the values without decimals and floats are the numerical values with decimal entry. So what will be a variable like 5.0 B? Would that be a float or an int? Let's just check. So what is the type of Z? It is a float. So irrespective of what the value is, as long as a decimal is present, it is going to be a float. Another popular data type, let's say we store something under a variable by the name S as Hello. And if you want to check what is the data type of S, we'll simply type S. And S is another data type, which is a string. So while dealing with data, we'll be dealing with numbers. And we know that today, a lot of data around us is actually available in the form of text. The building unit of that text would be these strings. Another popular data type is a Boolean, which can be, let's say, a true or a false. So let's say we call a variable T, which stores true. Remember, I've not put it in quotes. If I put it in quotes, it will be treated as a string. So if I want to check the type of T, it says it is a Boolean. To put it in very simple terms, we've seen that there is a variable by the name X, which holds a value, and the value is associated with something that's known as a type. Now, there can be different types, such as integers, floats, strings, and Booleans. So far, so good. Now, depending on the types, we would want to perform certain operations. What are these operations? Let's head back to our notebook. So we saw that X had a value and Y also had a value. What if we want to perform X plus Y? And I want to store it by a new variable, let's say sum of the variables. So now what will be the sum variable that we've just created? It holds a value, which is the sum of X and Y. Remember X was five and Y was 3.4. Same way we can perform any number of arithmetic operations. Even if we have not given it a variable name, for demonstration purposes, I can show you how these arithmetic operations are performed. So let's say there is a value eight and I want to multiply it with a value 1.2. I can simply execute it here. Let's say we want to divide one variable with another or one value with another in this case. Let's say I take a value of eight and divide it by three. It returns 2.66. So we can do all arithmetic operations on the numerical and float variables. Please note that by default, the division operation returns a float variable. So for that matter, even if you would have divided 10 by five, intuitively you'd imagine that this would probably return a two, which is supposed to be an integer. But in Python, by default, the division operation returns a float. So this is going to return a 2.0, which is going to be a float. So depending on the nature of the variable, we can perform different operations. The operations which are valid for numbers are all the arithmetic operations. And as you can see, it is totally permissible to mix the integers and floats. But can we mix integers and strings? So we created a variable x initially. And if we, let's say, want to add the string s, which stores hello, what is it that we're going to get? Of course, we're going to get an error because it does not make sense to add a string to a number. However, 
can we add a string to a string? So there was a string called S. And let's say I create another string by the name of H and I'm calling it as words. And let's say I want to add S and H. So what is it that we get? Oh, it mixes everything up. It says, hello world. But if you want to give a space here, we could have probably tried giving a space here in the first place. So if I re-execute this now and I run it, it says, hello world. So it can add a string with another string. Actually, it only performs a concatenation operation, but you cannot add a string and an integer or a string and a float. What are these booleans? These are primarily used for checking a lot of conditions. So let's say if I want to check, is two greater than three? The response will be a boolean. It's a false. Is three greater than one? The response is a true. And if we want to mix these, let's say we want to check a couple of conditions together. So we want to check is two greater than three or is three greater than four? Now, if you want to put it in a better way, you may put it under parenthesis, though it will work the way I was writing it as well. But if you put it in the parenthesis, this is a better way to read it. So we are saying is two greater than three or three greater than four. Now, if even one of these conditions is satisfied, only then it is going to be a true. Otherwise, it will be a false. Here, as we can see that both the conditions are invalid. So this should return a false. However, if even one of these conditions were true, let's say if we rerun this by changing three to five, now it says it's three. Same way you can do an AND operation where let's say you want to check is four greater than two and is three greater than one. Now, when both the conditions are true, only then this AND operation is going to return a true. Notice that I've used an ampersand. Instead of this, you could have typed an AND also. That's also going to return the same output, which is a true in this case. R is also represented by a pipe. So if you replace it with a pipe and run it, it's one and the same thing in Python. So either you can type it or you can use the notation for it. For the numbers, there are some other operations that we perform. So let's say if I want to find the quotient when I divide four by two. So two is a divisor and four is the dividend. It says two times two is four. Maybe this will be clearer if I change this four with a six and I rerun this. So three times two is six. If let's say we are dividing a seven by three and I'm using a percentage sign, this is a modulus operator, which returns the remainder. So when I run this one here, it says the remainder is going to be one. So these are some of the basic operations that we can perform provided we know the data type. But there are times when you're working on a data, you may be required to convert the data type from one to another. So in those cases, you may want to do something known as the type casting. So you can actually convert the nature of the variables. For example, let's say there's a variable called gender, which is coded as one for females and zero for males. This is a categorical variable. It does not really have any meaning if you want to perform numerical operations on it. So in these cases, you may want to convert this variable to let's say a string. So how do we do that? We can just simply write str of g. So what is that? So we've converted this variable g into a string by doing this. And notice this one is not the same as what you had earlier when you were dealing with numbers. Earlier when you were typing an integer one, it did not have quotes. Right now it is a string. So if I want to add string g with x, x is an integer. Will that work? Of course not. It would not work anymore because you've converted this variable g, which was originally an integer, now to a string. Same way, let's say we have x as an integer and we want to convert it to a float in this case. So can we do that? It is now a 5.0, which means it is a float. So this is called typecasting and it is important at times when we want to convert the type of one variable to another. Another important piece in Python is, let's say I have a variable called A, which stores a value three, and I create another variable B, which stores A. In the next step, if I overwrite A, let's say I say A is now five, what would be the value of this variable B in that case? Let's see, so A is now five, that's very clear, but B, would that change? No, B continues to store the value three. Essentially, what this means is that B and A are not pointing towards the same value in the memory. Because 
if that was the case, when you were overriding A, it would have also changed the value of B. B stored a copy of A as it originally was. When you modified A, it has no influence on B. If you've studied other languages, you might find it slightly different here, but this is how Python works. So in this video, we started with the introduction to variables, different data types, and the common operations. In the next video, we'll be starting with the collection of variables, such as lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets. Thank you.